Hello everybody, Clinton here at Oval Window Racing and today we're going to be working on the grease pit. I coined this engine the Greek Geek, uh, Geek, the Geek. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. I coined this engine the grease pit because when I took it in it was all nice and greasy and I always kind of like to give one of my builds some type of a nickname and this one was greasy dirty, now it's clean. And today um, we're going to do a little test fit on the bearings and show you a neat little trick um, I like to do so you don't wind up doing the same thing that the previous builder did this and get the bearings all messed up. So follow along. Let's get this apart. Alright, let's see. Back from the machine shop, got a nice line board here. It's gonna need a little fine cleaning. But we'll do that before we uh, do a, the final assembly. Um, the other thing we'll do is we'll uh, gonna check these lifter bores. And uh, I'll check them with the camshaft in there and make sure we have clearance between, a good, good amount of clearance between the top of the lifter and the cam. Um, that way you don't wind up uh, flattening out the cam. Um, but here, let's move on, let's find the bearings. What we got here is a nice set of new silver line bearings, engine bearings. Let's get them open here. The nice thing about these is they should still be uh, metal backed here on the uh, center mains. Some of the uh, bearing manufacturers kind of did away with that and they're all aluminum. Yeah, a lot of guys don't run that because they say uh, they'll actually uh, pound a case out faster. Never really had much experience uh, pounding a case out, but then again I've never really put 100,000 miles on, it, on one of these engines yet. Um, but I have always run steel back bearings on the, the main bear or center mains. The first thing we're going to do is uh, put these little dowel pins I showed you in a previous video. I'm going to put these uh, back in the engine case, or actually case halves. Sometimes these fit a little tighter from one, one hole to the next. i going to find the ones they'll be happy, happy in. The other hand in half. All right, now that we got those in, it's uh, time to do a little fitting with the with these bearings here. The center ones are pretty simple. Can't really go wrong with these. I line them up and kind of push them in evenly. And it should feel almost flush here. I'm going to do the same on the other case half. Hey, that feels good. I lost a little bearing. Ah, oh, there it is. I'm going to come over here to this case half here and just kind of do a little test feel here. This is going to be uh, facing the end of the case. It's the oil escape. I just wanted to get a good feel for the line bore. Should go in with just a little snug, just a little press. press. And that does feel really nice. So what we're going to do just gotta definitely line this dowel up with that or dowel dowel hole up with that dowel pin down there. And I usually just kind of stick them in there and just lightly just turn it until you feel it drop in. Right there. I felt it drop the pin drop in and I'll push it in. Now this bearing here with the uh, without the lips on it, that would be uh, main bearing number two, It'd be the first one back from the nose of the case here. 
And we'll do the same with that. We'll just rock it back and forth till we feel it fall in. We'll give it a push. And then this one, with the lips on here, these are your thrust lips. This is the rear main. Let's take care of the box. And I'm going to go over here and feel this on this case half without the dowel pin again, just to make sure we got a, a good fit. If you want to, this, this fit here goes two ways. You don't want it to rock back and forth too much. And you definitely, of course, want it to pinch in just a little. And it does. It's nice. Nice. Okay, again, got the little dowel hole. It's on the rear of the bearing, and the rear over there. Another thing you kind of want to look for on these, I don't know if you can see it here with the camera here. Camera nice and close. This groove in here is your oil groove. You want that to line up with this oil hole here. If that doesn't line up with that oil hole, you're going to have an oiling issue. You want to lazily correct that. Take a look at this hole here and see if you can see the oil in the hole. One way you can correct that is you can kind of just take this on a lathe and make this oil groove a little wider. But to me it looks like it looks pretty good. And again, we're going to spin around until we feel that pin drop in. Must have went too far. Let's go back the other way. Oh, I missed it. There it is there. Down here a little closer. Give her a tad spin. Drop in. Push down. All right, now we're going to grab our Sharpie here. I'm going to show you a little trick. Um, something I learned back uh, probably in Hot VWs, uh, they, they put out a couple uh, issues of engine building. Uh, they were special edition issues, uh, you had to buy them separate, um, wait for a big diesel truck to go by. <laughs> Alright, um, Hot VWs uh, um, back in the early 2000s uh, did a couple issues of uh, how to build high, high performance engines. and. Uh, it was either in that or just in one of their tech articles uh, where I learned this. And I actually did share this. Um, some of you guys may remember uh, Calook.com. They had kind of a how-to section. And I actually took pictures years ago and submitted them in, into, into there. And they actually were kind enough to put them on their, their forums or their website. Um, but what you're going to do here is take your magic marker. Now that you got these bearings in here nicely, we're just going to draw a little line here. Make sure we get it out of the bearing. You don't have to worry about the center one, you'll know that's in there. We'll do this front one. We're going to come over here and do the rear one on both sides. And another thing I like to do, back in front of the camera, is I'm going to put an arrow on the, uh, especially the, the center main bearing number two. And I'm going to point the arrow towards the pulley end, not the flywheel end. And I'm going to do it on here just for fun too. Not so much uh, needed on the rear, because you can always uh, change the, the rear around, the rear main. But this bearing here, I'll show you why I'll pull it out. As you can see, the dowel pin is on the back side of the bearing. So if you just happen to put this on your crank um, backwards, you'll, you'll, never, you'll never get it to fit. And the trouble with this bearing is uh, this one sits behind your cam gear and your uh, distributor drive gear, which those things are pressed on there. You actually have to heat them up, slide them on, let them cool down. So there's no way to get that off unless you have a puller or use a hammer and a chisel, which I don't recommend. Um, you always should use a puller on it. But uh, it, it's, it's a pain, and it's a step that you're not going to want to have to do again. So that little arrow can save you. But um, with these lines here, you can see, push that in there, and drop it in there that you're gonna be good you go you, you go 
start cranking the case down and you notice your arrows aren't lined up, you know you're going to be pinching. All right, our next thing um, we're going to do, next tech tip, is we're basically just going to repeat the video I did previous to this um, on basically just bolting and torquing down the case has. But this time, the difference this time, I'm going to be doing it with the bearings in the engine case. And the reason I do this is kind of to see where my torque specs are going to be. I know the uh, owner's manual, I believe, says to torque the main six bolts down, excuse me, torque the main six case nuts down to about 25 foot-pounds. But sometimes you may need to go a little bit more than that. And by doing this, you can kind of see where you need to be at. Um, so let's get going. All right, what I got here are just uh, some washers and nuts that I use for this. These are just factory uh, washers and nuts. Normally when I put these together, I do use a uh, one of those stainless steel nylon locking nuts, but uh, this is coming right back apart, so there's no need to use those. And just a Lightly tighten them down with the wrench here. I don't believe a factory uh, actually has any torque pattern for these. Oh, maybe they just had a machine that did all of them at one time. I just kind of do a cross pattern. And you can also see the uh, case savers. I had my uh, machinist, uh, Jim Green, put in. Looks like he got them all nice and countersunk too, so we shouldn't have any issues with the uh, cylinders pressing up against them. Let's get torque wrench. I'm going to first um, torque down to 25 foot pounds. And see where that gets us. All right, now I gotta find my flashlight. All right, got the handy dandy flashlight. Let's get the lights turned out and uh, take a look in. All right, there's the hole. There's the light. Let's look and see if there's any light showing through. Let's see any there. Come in here. There's a little bit, I can see a little a little light shining through there. Just a little bit. That's light coming in. Get where we need to be here. Oh yeah, a little, little showing through there too. Let's see in the front half here. Don't notice any there. So, with that being a little light showing through there, it's in the center main. And I'm going to try torquing it down like another um, 10 foot pounds to 35 foot pounds. So, we'll see if that pulls together. All right, let's reset this 10, 5, 10 more. Alright, let's 
get the lights back out and do this again. And here we go. You wouldn't notice anything. Usually the trouble is always in the center. And here we go. That looks good. Get this side. That side looks good. And this stuff looked good earlier, so. All right, with that done, that's basically telling me that uh, we're going to torque this case down to a little more than 35 foot-pounds. It'll probably go 38, just a little safe measure. As you can see, the, the book said 25, um, and as you can see, the case did not pull together at 25 foot-pounds. And the reason you want that seal there is if that case is split a little bit apart, that's going to create a, a gap for oil to go through, and you will have a low oil pressure. Um, a lot of times you, that'll be really noticeable at an idle, um, not so much at high revs, um, or as I should say mid, midway revs, but um, it, it could cause problems um, in the long term at high revs. Um, this engine um, is going to go into a, they call a Baja bug, um, and it's going to be going up to Silver Lake. So I will assume that once in a while it'll see some high, uh, R, higher RPM range, um, especially when you start hitting jumps and stuff. And it's, the tires start free spinning, uh, you're going to have some free revving. I don't know what he's going to be running for an ignition system on it, hopefully something with some type of a rev limiter. Um, I'm probably recommending that to him. The next step is going to be to stick uh, the bearings on the crank, and then try to fit the crank in the case, kind of doing the same thing, make sure everything spins around, and uh, probably maybe mounting the flywheel to get a, an end play reading. And then after that, we'll be fitting the cam with the crank and make sure everything still spins around. And then, like I mentioned earlier, we'll be uh, um, lifters and cam clearance. Um, but that'll all be in the future. So uh, thanks for stopping in today. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, I hope this was kind of educational and you did enjoy it. Uh, please subscribe and hit the notification button. I'm going to try uh, to um, continue uh, showing you guys more of this engine. Uh, but until then, uh, be safe. I'll catch you later. Kick it!